Hi, good day everyone. My name is Caleb Lewis and I'm here to present some of the work that I've been doing over the past eight years um, where we assessed how cadmium uptake and partitioning in cacao differs between genotypes and how this variation can be used to mitigate the cadmium accumulation problem in cacao at the farm level. So within this project, we completed and published two studies. In the first study, we investigated the impact of soil metal diversity and concentration on metal accumulation in cacao. Here we used uh, five soil metal extractants to screen a number of farms in Trinidad. And what we found is that MELIC-3 and DTPA soil metal extractants were best at estimating the plant available soil cadmium concentrations. We also found that soil cadmium, nickel, zinc, and pH explain 70% of the variation in leaf cacao cadmium concentrations. We then screened the gene bank for differences in leaf and bean cadmium between cacao varieties. We also collected close to 200 soil samples from the gene bank and analyzed those soil samples for soil cadmium concentrations. And what we found is that the differences in cadmium accumulation between varieties was larger than the variation in soil factors across the um, gene bank. What this suggested to us is that the differences in cadmium accumulation between varieties at the gene bank was largely due to genetic variation. So this led us to some new studies and one of the important studies of course is to validate that the differences in cadmium accumulation between varieties was due to genetic variation. Uh, the second study was to assess cadmium accumulation through plant growth and development. Uh, today, I'll be presenting mostly on the first study. Um, we'll be looking at differences in plant um, cadmium accumulation between varieties, uptake and partitioning. And the second study, I'll be focusing on the factors that influence um, cotyledon cadmium accumulation, the differences in cotyledon cadmium accumulation between varieties at the gene bank. And at the end, I'll bring it together um, to, be, to, to, to identify some main regulatory points that can be used to reduce cadmium accumulation in the bean at the farm level. So the validation of the genetic variation of cadmium accumulation in cacao, here we wanted to confirm that differences in cadmium accumulation between accessions at the gene bank was due to genetic variation, of course, and then assess differences in cadmium uptake and partitioning between ca five cacao varieties. So the five cacao varieties selected were, were um, from, from, selected from the gene bank. Three of them were identified as low from the screen at the gene bank study, and those three were CL103, PA120, and RADAMEL130. The high varieties were NA34 and PA194. From these five varieties, we collected rooted cuttings and we grew them in a drip irrigation system. And the system was a soilless media of, a soilless inert media of vermiculite, sand, and gravel. And the nutrients was fed through a drip irrigation system for nine months, nine months of growth without any um, cadmium, without any cadmium treatment. After nine months, cadmium treatment was added at low levels and high levels for three months. And at the end of that three month period, the plants were separated into different parts, roots, stems, and the stems were separated into interclush one, two, and three phases, and the leaves were separated into interclush one, two, and three phases. So this is a picture of the, um, the plants after one year, so that's after cadmium treatment, just before we harvested them. As you can see, there are no signs of malnutrition or toxic uh, metal effects, suggesting that these plants were very comfortable with any system under both high and low conditions of cadmium. So for the results, what we found is that NA34, for NA34, there was a significant reduction in root mass under high cadmium treatment conditions. And what we saw is that for the other varieties, they were, uh, the cadmium treatment did not have an effect on root mass. Looking at total plant cadmium content, what we see is what can be expected first in that the under low cadmium conditions, 
the total plant cadmium content was significantly lower than the total plant cadmium content under high cadmium conditions, that the green, that the green um, bars. But we also see that there are significant differences in total plant cadmium content between varieties under high cadmium treatment conditions. Uh, but this, the total plant cadmium content, of course, will be influenced by plant mass. And we also saw within the system that some varieties just um, are more vigorous than others. So some varieties were larger, and the larger varieties had um, uh, uh, NA24, PA120, and PA194. So it does not really give uh, the full picture of uptake. What we were able to do with the drip irrigation system is quantify metal uptake for each plant. And we use this, this um, the quantification of metal uptake to correct for the total plant cadmium content. And after correcting, what we found is that some varieties, some, some varieties, the NA34 and PA194, um, absorb more cadmium from what is available in the solution than other varieties. So under low, under low conditions, cadmium conditions in the, um, the gray bars, what you can see is that between varieties, there were no differences in cadmium uptake. But when you look at the green bars, we see that um, NA34 and PA194 and PA take up more cadmium from, from that solution. This also shows that CL10-3, PA120, and Red ML130, um, under low and high cadmium conditions, the, the, the uptake of cadmium was similar showing that for these varieties, the differences in cadmium accumulation between low and high cadmium conditions was simply due to the treatment level. Now, this also here for NA34, you can see that NA34 absorbs more cadmium from the solution than the other varieties. And as we saw previously, for that variety under high cadmium conditions, there was a significant reduction in root mass. What this shows is that even though the treatment was the same, the exposure to cadmium was different as this variety absorbed more of cadmium or more of the cadmium from the solution than the others. So moving on, we look at we're looking at partitioning um, between the organs versus cadmium treatment. What we see here is that under low cadmium conditions, cadmium is preferentially transported to the leaves, whereas under high cadmium conditions, cadmium is preferentially transported to the stem. Um, and we also see that under high cadmium conditions, there's a concerted effort by the plant to reduce the partitioning of cadmium to the leaves by increasing both cadmium partitioning into the roots and the stems. Likely, the plant is using under low cadmium conditions the transport of cadmium to the leaves as a way to reduce cadmium accumulation with the plant, within the plant as true leaf senescence and, and through leaf senescence and leaf fall, um, the cadmium accumulation um, in the plant under low cadmium conditions would be maintained at a low level. However, under high cadmium conditions, there's a mechanistic switch where cadmium preferentially is stored in the roots, well, in the stem, and to some extent to the roots to prevent um, the toxic effects um, of cadmium accumulation in the leaves, which are the photosynthetic organs that are important for plant growth. So looking a little bit further, what we did is um, we, we're looking at how cadmium is distributed within the shoots of the plant. So we're looking at different flush phases for the leaves and for the stems. So if we look at the leaves first, we can see under low cadmium conditions, of course, we already know that cadmium is partitioned to the leaves, but we can also see that the, the highest proportion of cadmium was in the leaf interflush two feet. And then the lowest, of course, is that the leaf interflush three feet. The leaf, leaf interflush, three, interflush three phase would be when there's leaf senescence and fall. So that's when the leaves are very mature and of course uh, are, are, and are at the stage of senescing. So the, that, the, leaf, the leaf mass there would be very low. So um, whereas under high cadmium conditions, we see a constant reduction in leaf partitioning, uh, in cadmium partitioning to the leaves. We look further at the stem, what we can see in um, at interflush, leaf interflush one on the high cadmium conditions, we see that cadmium is preferentially transported to the leaves. At the interflush one stage is where the leaves are, the leaves are young and fully expanding leaves. So at that stage, 
is where the leaves go through um, the most rapid expansion and they reach the size of a mature leaf. So at that stage, there'd probably be a lot of um, nutrients going towards that, that young leaf. And likely that's where the um, cadmium is transported preferentially to the leaf over the stem. But when you look at under high cadmium treatment conditions at the interflush two phase, we see that there's a switch where um, cadmium is preferentially now transported to the stems. And this continues into interflush three, where as you can see, interflush three has a lot more cadmium stored in the stems than under high ca cadmium conditions than any other tissue, any other um, organ at any other developmental stage. Um, you also see under low cadmium conditions that even though the leaves, the, the, leaves, the leaves contain more cadmium than the stems under low cadmium conditions, we see that the mature stems is still an important reservoir or sink for cadmium accumulation. So um, what this suggests to us is that we, we, we must pay attention to the stems also as the stems, as the plant grows, the stem expands radially. That means that as the stem expands radially, it's also an increasing sink for cadmium within the, at the farm site. And that's an important finding. So looking at the metal accumulation through plant growth, as I said, I'm only highlighting the, the, the factors that influence fertility and cadmium concentration. As we can see, um, we, we looked at nine varieties, 10 varieties, sorry. And at the bottom, you can see ELP 1S4 and TRD 94 highlighted. For each of the varieties, we selected three trees. But for those two varieties, and we only got pods from for TRD 94, we got pods from two trees. And for ELP 1S4, um, we got pods from one tree. After we collected the pods, we, we were able to determine um, some morphological traits. So single pod mass, mass of beans per pod, single bean mass, beans per pod over single pod house mass. We're looking at how um, the partition, the dry matter between the pod and the, and the bean, the pod house and the beans. And then cotyledon and tester, we're looking at how that dry, dry mass is partitioned between the test and the cotyledon. We also looked at some elemental traits. Here we looked at um, cadmium content per pod, uh, bean cadmium percent, so that's how cadmium is partitioned between the husk and the beans of the pod, and then the cotyledon cadmium percent, how cadmium is partitioned between the test and the cotyledon, and of course, cotyledon cadmium concentration. So regression analysis showed us that what explained cadmium, um, cotyledon cadmium concentration, which is of course the most important, um, the, the most important uh, factor here, because that's what we want to reduce, pod cadmium content, total bean mass, and partitioning of cadmium between the husk and the beans. So pod cadmium content would be a, a summation then of the factors that, that differ between varieties for, in terms of uptake and partitioning and that can lead to, that can, that can cause the variations in loading of cadmium into the pod husk itself. Total bean mass, of course, that is self-explanatory, how the mass of the beans within the, within the pod and how cadmium is partitioned between the husk and the, um, and, and, the, and the beans. And we saw that it explained 86% of the variation in cadmium, concent cadmium, cotyledon cadmium concentration between varieties at the gene bank. So to conclude, what we found is that cadmium uptake, differences in cadmium uptake is the most important uh, factor that that causes variation in cadmium accumulation between varieties. So it would be important to identify rootstocks that uptake low concentrations of cadmium from the soil um, to be to implement those through grafting or breeding new varieties at farm at the farm level to reduce cadmium accumulation. We also found that the stems and leaves are the main reservoirs or the main sinks of cadmium within the plant and partitioning between stem, the stem and the leaves can play an important role. Um, for this study, the five varieties that we, that we screened, we did not see the partitioning 
of cadmium between the stems and the leaves playing such a significant role. But it's possible that if we increase the, um, the number of varieties that we look at, we can identify a variety that preferentially partitions cadmium within the stems of the plant. And that can be used to, um, to, to mitigate. Also, an important finding that could be applied in the short term is when pruning, you, um, instead of, through, instead of um, leaving the, the stems at the farm site, what we suggest is that you remove the stems from the farm site to reduce cycling of cadmium within the um, farm system. I know that uh, some people consider uh, removing the leaves from the farm system, but that's very onerous. That's very um, time consuming and costly. I think that when pruning, um, it's much easier to manage that, to take away that um, the stem dry matter from the farm site to reduce that long-term cycling, recycling of cadmium within Within the, within the ecosystem. Uh, we also found that cadmium partitioning between the beans and the husk, um, and bean mass, and cadmium partitioning between the beans and the husk, and bean mass play an important role in, in um, cadmium, in, in, in influencing differences in the cotyledon and cadmium concentration between varieties. Uh, this can be this can be exploited in breeding where we can identify varieties that preferentially store cadmium within the husk of the plant of, of the pod and reduce cadmium translocation into the beans themselves. Another um, another possibility to reduce cadmium concentration is increasing the bean biomass. So these things can be considered when developing new varieties that have many um, preferential traits one of them being low cadmium accumulation within the cotyledons of the plant. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank the ECA Calbisco FCC Joint Research Fund for funding the research. Um, these results will hopefully be published soon. Um, and um, I'm here look, look, waiting for any feedback and any questions. Thank you for listening.